Hi, thanks for joining me. First and foremost, 250 subscribers. I am so, so happy to hit 250 subscribers in under two months of this channel is amazing. The growth has been insane. So a massive, massive, massive thank you if you are subscribed. But as I say, all the milestones, and I'll continue to say it for quite a while, onwards and upwards. Uh, the next milestone, 300 subs. I'm fairly sure we can hit that before the end, or before mid-September, in fact. So if you aren't subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I'm going to make so many maths videos. Today I'm going to be doing a problem-solving one, but I also do ones where I just explore cool areas of maths. Anyway, let's get into the problem. Firstly, the reason I'm doing this problem is because somebody requested I do a problem on modular arithmetic. So if you do have any spe specific requests or anything, do shove them in the comments below, and I'll definitely try to make some videos about them. Anyway, let's get stuck into the problem. We have a problem four from the 2005 IMO, and we have this sequence of numbers, a n, defined as follows. So a n equals two to the n, plus three to the n, plus six to the n, minus one, and that's for all natural numbers n. Then we have this set here, which I'm calling S, to be the set of natural numbers T, for which the greatest common divisor of T and a n is one. And that's for all natural numbers n. Now, so what this set is, is it's a subset of the natural numbers, which has the property that any number in this set is co-prime to absolutely every number in this sequence here. And now what we want to know what S is explicitly. So if you want to have a go at the problem, please pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so I'm going to say what the answer is, and then I'm going to work towards showing that that is the answer. So S is the empty set, and that's my claim, and I'm going to work towards it. Firstly, I'm going to prove that there are no prime numbers in S, which may seem like a little bit ar quite arbitrary to start off with, but if we look at this thing here, it seems that the prime number is definitely going to be involved, and the reason we can sort of squeeze modular arithmetic into this video is we know a little bit about Fermat's little theorem, which talks about numbers raised to uh, prime power, or uh, prime power minus one. Okay, so first let me state uh, Fermat's little theorem. It says that if you have a prime number P and a number A which uh, is not a multiple of P, then A to the P minus one is congruent to one mod P. Okay, so in other words, the remainder when you divide A to the P minus one by P is one. Okay, well, how is this going to help us? Uh, well, if we look at this expression here, we've got things raised to a power p minus 1. And I want to show that there are no prime numbers in p. In other words, that there exists some, for each prime number p, for all primes p, there exists some n such that the GCD of p a n is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, and that will show that p is not in s. Okay, well, let's work towards proving this using the definition of a n. Well, let's perhaps look at a p minus 1, because we know uh, we're looking at mod p, and obviously if I can show that a, a, sorry, a sub p minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, then I know that p divides uh, a to the p minus 1, and then hence uh, the greatest common divisor of p comma a p minus 1 will be at least p, and obviously then greater than or equal to 2, and I'm done. Okay, and the reason I say put in p minus 1 is then we're going to have things like 2 to the p minus 1, 3 to the p minus 1, and it'll be very similar to the form of Fermat's little theorem, so we can use that. Okay, so let's look at a to the p minus, uh, a sub p minus 1 first. Okay, and we'll look at that's equal to 2 to the p minus 1, plus 3 to the p minus 1, plus 6 to the p minus 1, minus 1. Now, of course, remember one condition of Fermat's little theorem is that p and a are co-prime, so in particular we need the prime to be bigger than 2, 3, uh, 2 and 3, or any factors of 6, but obviously the factors of 6 are just 2 and 3, so this holds for, so we're going to consider, sorry, primes bigger than or equal to 5 first, and then of course at the end we can just check the cases p equals 2 and p equals 3. Okay, well looking at Fermat's little theorem, that's congruent to 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, and that is of course congruent to 2, mod p. Ah, that number there is not zero. So we can't really make too much of a conclusion out of this, apart from that the p minus 1 term is too bigger than uh, the p, uh, the, too bigger than the multiple of p. Ah, well, do we give up? Do we just stop here? No, we don't. We just sort of play around with this a bit further, and notice that we, we, we recall the, the fact uh, from modular arithmetic, from number theory, Sorry, if AC is congruent to zero, 
mod b, and that the greatest common divisor of b and c is 1, then that implies that a is congruent to 0 mod, mod b. Sorry. Okay, so that's something I'm going to use, and I'm going to use it in the next line. So in other words, if c and b are co-prime, then you can sort of divide both sides by c, and it will follow that uh, a is congruent to 0 mod b. Okay, so the next sort of thing may be sort of a leap of faith, but remember you have an hour and a half to play with this problem, so you'd perhaps try another value of n. So I'm going to try the value of n, p minus 2. So if I do a n, and then I plug in p, a, sorry, a p minus 2, I'm going to get 2 to the p minus 2, plus 3 to the p minus 2, plus 6 to the p minus 2, minus 1. Okay, and remember we want to look at this mod p, and we want to be able to use Fermat's little theorem. But Fermat's little theorem says that we have to have a p minus 1 in the exponent, so we could multiply everything by 2 to get uh, a p minus 1 here, but then we get 2 times 3 to the p minus 2 there. So we see that if we multiply through by 6, if we multiply this line by 6, we're going to get 3 times 2 to the p minus 1 here, 2 times 3 to the p minus 1 there, and 6 times p to the minus 1 there, minus 6. Okay, so let's do that. So on the left-hand side, we've just got 6ap minus 2, and that is congruent to uh, 3 times 2 to the p minus 1, plus 2 times 3 to the p minus 1, plus 6 to the p minus 1, minus 6. And remember, I'm going to look at this mod p. Oh, mod p. Okay, so let's get rid of some stuff here, and we'll look at this line a bit further. Okay, so 2 to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, 3 to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, as is 6 to the p minus 1. So this thing here is congruent to 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus uh, 1 minus 6. Ah, things are starting to piece together. 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6 minus 6 is 0 mod p. Woo! And remember the thing I just I had written down here, we, because 6 and p are, are co-prime, p and 6 share no common factors apart from 1, I can divide both sides by 6, and thus conclude that a to p minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod p. And remember, this is for p greater than or equal to 5. Cool! So I found that if p is a prime number greater than or equal to 5, then a to the p minus 2 will be congruent to 0 mod p, and thus, the greatest common divisor of p, comma, a p minus 2, well, that's going to be at least p, because p is prime, and uh, the greatest common divisor divides both of these things here. Um, then, yeah, so, and obviously, as p is bigger than or equal to 5, this is certainly bigger than 1. So, we've shown that if p is a prime number bigger than or equal to 5, then p is not in s. So, just, so it remains to show, to show that there are no prime numbers in s, um, it just remains to show that 2 and 3 are not in S. Okay, so let's just do those special cases right now. So let's do P equals 2 first. Well, let's just look at the case N equals 1. So the first term in this sequence. So A1, well, that's just 2 to the 1 plus 3 to the 1 plus 6 to the 1 minus 1. That's 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 6 is 11 minus 1 is 10. I'm just going to check that because in my last video I made a very, well, in one of my other videos, I think on Pick's Theorem, Someone pointed out that I made a very basic numeracy mistake, so I'm not going to make that today. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, minus 1 is 10. Cool. And clearly 10 is a multiple of 2. This is congruent to 0, mod 2. So again, that means that 2 is not in S. Now let's look at P equals 3. So why not let's look at the next term, because obviously 10 is not a multiple of 3. Perhaps let's look at A2. So that's 2 squared plus 3... Uh, Sorry, not square. Oh, no, it is square, sorry. 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared minus 1. Well, firstly, these two things here are clearly multiples of 3. So this is just congruent to 2 squared, sorry, 2 squared minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is obviously 0 mod 3. And again, we're done. We've shown that P uh, equals 3 is not in S. So we've shown so far that there are no prime numbers in S. But remember, I said that S is the empty set. But we've also got to check the composite numbers. Okay, so now I'm going to make the claim that there are no composite numbers in S. Okay, so I'm going to prove now that there are no composite numbers in S, and I'm going to do that by contradiction. So here's my claim here. 
let's suppose t is a composite number, so I've written it as p1 times all the way up to pk, where p1 all the way up to pk are prime numbers, and then I'm going to claim that t is not in s. Okay, so suppose for contradiction that t is in s. Okay, well then that means that the greatest common divisor of t and a n is 1, and that's for all natural numbers n. Okay, now I'm going to show that because p1, for example, we know that p1 is not in s, because we've just shown that no prime numbers are in s. Okay, so then that means that the, there exists some n such that the greatest common divisor of p1 and a n is greater than or equal to 2. So in other words, if we call this thing here d, the greatest common divisor of p1 and a n, we have that d divides p1 and d divides a n and d is also greater than or equal to 2. Okay, but obviously, if d divides p1, then because t is p1 times p2 times all the way up to pk, it follows that d must also divide t, and then thus d is also divides a n, just bringing that down. But remember, d is bigger than or equal to 2, so that implies that the greatest common divisor of t and a n is greater than or equal to 2. But then that's a contradiction. Um, because we're saying that t is in s, but then this implies that t is not in s. So we've arrived at our contradiction. So in other words, no composite numbers are in s, and that solves the problem. We showed firstly that there are no prime numbers in s by using Fermat's little theorem for primes bigger than or equal to 5, and then we showed that the case prime, uh, prime numbers 2 and 3 are not in s by just looking at the first two terms of this sequence, and then we can quickly conclude using a uh, quite a neat argument of proof by contradiction, that there are no composite numbers in S as well. So that, pro that proves that uh, S is the empty set, um, and we're done. Uh, because obviously every natural number bigger than or equal to 2 is either prime or composite, and we've just shown that primes and composites aren't in uh, S, and obviously the case T equals 1, well, that any, any number in this sequence certainly has 1 as a factor. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. A little bit of modular arithmetic there, a little bit of number theory, and solving an IMO question, and uh, I don't think it's one of the hardest IMO questions that there have been, um, especially if you know Fermat's little theorem, I guess the hardest thing was knowing to put in n is p minus 2, but remember you do have an hour and a half for these problems, so you have plenty of time to try different routes. Anyway, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing, I make loads of maths videos, as I said, um, but yeah, onwards and upwards, 300 subs is the next milestone. Catch you in the next one, have a great day.